these are just some things you might want to think about carrying with you to enhance your poncho shelter uh, experience. The first one is a genuine 550 paracord with seven strands on the inside. This is going to hold a 550 pound uh, tensile strength. The next one's a micro cord and I'll, I'll show you where that might come in handy but it's just a little thinner nylon cord. The third one is shock cord and that is uh, like elastic type cord. Uh, then of course we've got a Bic lighter because when you cut any type of cord you want to burn the ends to keep it from fraying. This is a uh, garden stake and I find these to be more useful uh, sometimes than tent stakes because you can put them directly through the grommet of the poncho when you're trying to get it down close to the ground. Uh, this is the best kind of tent stake uh, for general applications that I've found. Are these, um, if you look at them edge on, they're, they're Y shaped and they tend to grab onto the ground no matter what direction they're pulled. This is a more um, genuine article. Uh, I think this is made by MSR. And you can see where I had uh, painted it olive drab at some point to be tactical, but the paint wears off pretty quickly. A uh, bungee cord. And finally, something that's for sale in uh, most military PXs and a lot of other stores are these cam jams that can be used to put tension on a line. They're not necessary because there's a lot of knots and hitches you can use for the same purpose. But if you want to keep from having to learn taut line hitches and things like that, the cam jam is kind of a nice thing to know about. So the dimensions of the U.S. government issue poncho are 87 inches by 62 inches, or basically a little bit over 7 feet by a little bit over 5 feet. So it's pretty big, big enough that you can make a pretty decent shelter for a person out of it. Before you decide what type of shelter to make out of your poncho, you have to ask yourself, what are you protecting against? If uh, the poncho can basically protect you against uh, two things, wind and rain. So depending on the wind and the rain conditions, you're gonna choose a different type of shelter. And if it's not windy or raining, you might just wanna lay it out as a ground sheet and then lie on top of it with your sleeping bag without anything over you at all. You can just look up at the sky and enjoy the stars. I think backpackers call that cowboy camping. So if you don't need a poncho shelter, don't make one based on the weather forecast. The first step with any of these shelters is to tie the hood off. So I've just taken a piece of micro cord and simply used a square knot to uh, tie the hood off so that water won't leak uh, through the poncho, through the hood hole. Okay, the first configuration I'm showing here is the plow point and we want the plow point i.e. the part that's touching the ground to be pointing into the wind. So if the wind is from the northwest, you can just pull out your compass and uh, point it toward the northwest. So it points in the direction that the weather forecast says the wind's coming from. First step is just to connect one corner to a tree. Doesn't matter what knot you use. I used a girth hitch and a overhand, but uh, whatever your favorite knot is will be perfectly fine. So then we stretch it out and we're going to stake down the uh, diagonal corner and then I'm going to use these garden stakes in the grommets. And anyhow, I've got three grommets and all the corners are staked down. And this creates a shelter. Of course, in the military, you're trying to be stealthy, so one key is to keep it fairly low to the ground so it can't be seen from very far away. One advantage of the plow point is that you only need uh, one tree, but if you have two trees or something, you can also make a lean-to, which uh, is probably a little more spacious, but also protects against the wind and rain. And of course the bottom of the lean-to needs to be pointing into the direction of the wind. Here I've used a bungee cord to keep tension. You could also use some type of ridge line, prussic knots. There's all kinds of ways to do it, but uh, bungee cords have always been sold in the uh, military clothing sales for the purpose of use with poncho shelters. I have my cord about waist high. Uh, Waist high is about three feet, and that's probably as high as you want your shelter 
in order to maintain concealment and have a good angle for the rain to wash off of it. Let's say the main concern is rain that's coming straight down, but you don't have any wind. Then you might want to use this A-frame with a ridge line. One nice thing about this particular configuration is I have uh, 360 degree visibility because I can peek out under, underneath the sides of the poncho shelter. And I can also exit from 360 degrees like this. Finally, let's say your commander puts you out in an area where there are no trees. Nothing but a dog pooping. And you can improvise with tent poles or some type of stick and erect your poncho shelter like this. Staking down the corners and then staking down the poles. One more configuration that's probably even more useful for open ground because it gives you more interior space to work with is the uh, lean-to using tent poles. So as you can see, I've got my tent poles are approximately waist high, it's about three feet. And uh, the guy lines are at a 45 degree angle in, in all three dimensions actually. So vertically and horizontally, you're at a 45 degree angle, 45 degree angles magical number for most physics applications including the maximum range for artillery but I digress uh, as you can see the windward side of the poncho is attached directly to the ground thanks to the garden stakes or garden staples if you're looking for these on like amazon.com they're called garden stakes very inexpensive you can get a hundred for about fifteen dollars so I risk doing math in public. I think it's about 15 cents a piece. You can see they're about six inches long, made out of galvanized wire. You could even improvise them yourself if you had some heavy duty wire. But in any case, they're very inexpensive, well worth the investment. And at 15 cents a piece, if you lose one, you're not gonna cry. So right on cue, it is raining and a little bit windy. So let's see if this poncho works out the way I thought it would. Until next time, stay dry.